Ever pondered how the word Palestine became the talk of the town? You wanna know? Huh? Huh? Do you? Do you? Do you? Oh, I bet you want, folks. So grab your popcorn, cause it's gonna be a wild ride in the time machine with a lot of twists. Get ready to uncover the hidden secrets you've ever told behind the name Palestine. Let's dive into the ancient saga of Judea and Samaria, a real-life episode of Who Named It Better? Spoiler. It's got more twists than a pretzel factory. Back in the day, Judea and Samaria were the Jewish people's chill spots, like ancient times version of a hip neighborhood. Just establishing a kingdom here, casual stuff for a king. And I'm over here building the first temple, it's gonna be epic. But some changes, fellas. The Romans march in and they're not here to sightsee. They've got a rebranding plan up their togas. Judea and Samaria? Now nah, let's give it a makeover and call it Palestine after the Philistines. Why? Because the Romans were into passive aggressive name changes. Let's jazz this up. Syria Palestina has a ring to it, right? Excuse me, but that's a historical no no. The name Switcheroo was Rome's way of throwing shade, using the Philistines' name to diss the Jews. It's like renaming your ex's favorite coffee shop just to mess with them. Hey, we're making a comeback in the name game. Despite Rome's renaming, the Jewish connection to the land stuck around. It's like calling pizza flatbread with toppings. It's still pizza, mate. And that class is how names can be more than just words. Uh, why am I still doing this? There you have it. The ancient roots and the Roman remix. A tale of names, empires, and a land that's seen more drama than Titanic. As we continue our historical deep dive, we enter the Middle Ages, a period that's like the ultimate crossover episode of history. Judea and Samaria, now with the Roman remix title Palestine, are about to witness a parade of rulers and rebranding efforts. In the name of the cross, we claim this land. Deus vote. Not so fast. This land belongs under Islamic rule. Enter the Crusaders with their swords and spears, enthusiastic to reclaim the Holy Land for Christendom. The region becomes a battleground for religious zeal and Judea and Samaria turn into real estate hot potatoes, tossed between crusaders and Muslim rulers. So, how should I label this area on the map? Just stick with Palestine for now, it's got brand recognition. Meanwhile, Jewish communities in the region are like, can we just live in peace? They're maintaining their presence, keeping traditions alive amidst the chaos. We're staying put, folks. This is our ancestral home, after all. Fast forward, and the Mamluks take over. They're not here for a name-changing party, so Palestine sticks. But let's be clear, the name's more about convenience than accuracy. It's like calling every soda Coke. We've got bigger fish to fry than renaming places. But here's where it gets interesting. While rulers and armies play tag with the land, cartographers and travelers keep using Palestine on maps and travelogues. The name starts to stick, not because it's historically accurate, but because it's easy to remember. Palestine, you say? Yeah, I've read about that in my travel guide. Despite the region's name game, the Jewish connection remains unbroken. They're the OG residents, holding on to their heritage like a treasured family heirloom. Our history and culture are rooted in this land, no matter what name it goes by. As the Middle Ages roll on, Palestine becomes the go-to label, but it's more of a placeholder than a proper title. It's like naming a stray cat that keeps visiting. It's convenient, but not exactly official. A land of many names, yet its soul remains the same. And that's the Middle Ages for you. A mix of crusades, caliphates, and cartography. The region's Jewish heritage persists, a testament to the enduring connection between a people and their land. So we've waltzed through the Crusades and chillaxed through the Mamluk era. Now cue the Ottoman Empire's grand entrance. It's the 16th century and these thugs are about to give Palestine some serious screen time. Behold, our new land. What's this called again? Ah, yes, Palestine. Sounds exotic. The Ottomans, not big on renaming sprees, keep the Palestine tag. 
But here's the kicker. Under their rule, the region is more like a backwater province than a headline star. We're still here, keeping the faith and traditions alive, no matter who's in charge. The Ottomans are all about administration and organization. They divide their massive empire into provinces, and Palestine gets sliced and diced into districts. It's like playing a giant game of risk, but with more paperwork. Wazowski, you didn't file your paperwork last night. Don't let it happen again. Let's see, we'll file this area under the Damascus province. Or was it Beirut? Eh, uh, we'll sort it out later. Meanwhile, European interest in the Holy Land starts to spike. <laughs> Pilgrims, adventurers, scholars, they're all flocking to Palestine, and not just for the hummus. I must document every inch of this land, the history, the people, the architecture. The Jewish presence remains a constant, a living link to the region's ancient past. Despite the empire's ups and downs, Jewish communities continue to thrive and grow, especially in cities like Jerusalem, Hebron, Safed, and Tiberias. Our connection to this land isn't just spiritual. It's our history, our culture, our very identity. Now, let's hop in the DeLorean and fast forward to the 19th century, where things get pretty darn fascinating. See you in the future. You mean the past. Nationalism is catching on like a viral meme, and the Jewish people start dreaming of a homeland revival. It's like the ultimate comeback tour. It's time for our people to return and reestablish our ancestral homeland, isn't it? As Zionism gains momentum, the idea of a Jewish state in Palestine starts to take shape. The region, known for centuries as Palestine, becomes the focal point of Jewish national aspirations. These Zionists have quite the vision. A Jewish state, you say? Intriguing. The Ottoman Empire, meanwhile, is starting to show cracks. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle, and pieces are beginning to fall off. Palestine, once a quiet corner of the empire, is now catching the world's eye. Not so fast. We have our own aspirations for this land. And that's the Ottoman era for you. A time of administrative reshuffling, growing European interest, and the seeds of Jewish national awakening. The stage is set in this epic saga, where Palestine becomes the center of global attention, and the Jewish dream of a homeland starts to crystallize. As the Ottoman Empire starts to resemble a fallen Jenga tower, enter the British Mandate era. It's the early 20th century, and the British are about to shake things up in Palestine. Right, let's get this mandate business sorted. Palestine, you're now under our management. The British mandate for Palestine, courtesy of the League of Nations, turns the region into a geopolitical chessboard. The British promise a national home for the Jewish people, but also try to appease the Arab population. It's like trying to juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle. Finally, a step towards our dream of a homeland. Not so fast. We have our own aspirations for this land. Amidst this tug of war, Jewish immigration to Palestine spikes. Zionists are all about building a future state, while the local Arab population watches with growing concern. Building a new life in our ancestral homeland, what could be better? Whoa, who are all these new neighbors? The British, in classic colonial fashion, try to play both sides. They issue the Balfour Declaration, supporting a Jewish homeland, but also pass the White Papers, limiting Jewish immigration. Talk about mixed messages. We support a Jewish homeland, but also let's limit Jewish immigration. Yes, that should work. Hmm. We're getting some mixed signals here. The tension in Palestine simmers like a pot about to boil over. Jewish and Arab communities are on edge each with their own vision for the future of the land. This land is Arab, and we'll fight to keep it that way. We're not backing down. This is our historic homeland. World War II and the Holocaust bring the plight of the Jewish people into sharp focus. The need for a safe haven becomes more urgent than ever. 
After such horrors, we need a place to call home, a place where we're safe. As the war ends, the Brits find themselves in a pickle. Jewish survivors of the Holocaust are desperate for a homeland, and the Arab population is adamant about preventing a Jewish state. This is getting rather complicated. Perhaps it's time to hand this over to the United Nations. The United Nations steps in, proposing a partition plan to divide Palestine into Jewish and Arab states. It's like a high-stakes game of Monopoly, but with real land and real lives at stake. Let's divide and conquer. I mean, divide and resolve. The stage is set for a dramatic showdown. The British Mandate era sets the scene for the birth of the State of Israel, while planting the seeds of the Arab-Israeli conflict. The land known as Palestine is about to witness a historic transformation, one that will change the course of history. Under King David's reign from around 1010 to 970 BCE, Jerusalem was established as the capital, symbolizing the Jewish people's sovereignty and deep connection to the land, particularly through victories over adversaries like the Philistines. King Solomon, ruling from circa 970 to 931 BCE, expanded this legacy by constructing the first temple in Jerusalem, reinforcing the central role of this city in Jewish worship and national identity. Despite the kingdom's division and the Babylonian exile starting 586 BCE, the Jewish bond to the land endured through the exile and the subsequent return, highlighting an unbreakable connection to Jerusalem and the Second Temple's reconstruction. The Roman Empire's conquest in 63 BCE and the subsequent renaming of Judea to Syria-Palestina after the Bar Kokhba revolt in 135 CE sought to diminish Jewish ties to the land by invoking the Philistines, an ancient enemy, despite their historical absence. Throughout Byzantine rule from 324 to 638 CE, despite Christianity's dominance, Jewish communities persisted in their ancestral homeland, maintaining their faith and traditions. From 638 CE, under various Islamic caliphates, Jews lived with fluctuating degrees of autonomy and tolerance, contributing to the region's diversity up to the arrival of the Crusaders in 1099 CE. The Crusades, spanning 1099 to 1291 CE, saw foreign Christian rule but could not extinguish the Jewish presence, which persisted in pockets despite adversity. Under Mamluk rule from 1291 to 1517 CE, Jewish communities in Jerusalem, Safed, and other cities, though diminished, upheld their heritage, showcasing resilience amidst changing sovereignties. From 1517 until the end of World War I in 1917, the Ottoman Empire oversaw the land without altering the enduring Jewish connection, seen through continuous settlement and religious practice. During the British Mandate from 1920 to 1948, Conflicting promises to Jews and Arabs culminated in the Balfour Declaration of 1917 and subsequent immigration waves, setting the stage for the modern conflict. The 1947 UN Partition Plan's acceptance by Jewish leaders and rejection by Arab leaders led to the establishment of Israel in 1948, affirming the millennial Jewish aspiration for sovereignty in their ancestral land. Hold up. Think it's over? Not even close. Ha ha ha. We're just warming up for the ultimate showdown. Get ready to buckle up for a wild ride because this is just the start of a roller coaster of epic proportions. Stay tuned because things are about to get intense. <laughs> 